So if we do get the two-year deal, how do you play it? My next guest brings two names he sees well-positioned to get a short-term bounce and two names for the long haul that are bargain buys, he says, where the time to get in is now. Let's welcome in Andrew Slimman. He's Senior Portfolio Manager at Morgan Stanley Investment Management. Good to see you, Andrew. And let's just get right to it. Um, what are the two names you think are immediate beneficiaries? Well, from a debt deal, look, I think the cyclical value names have really been hit hard. The breadth has been, as we all know, been very narrow. And I think if you get a, de a debt deal, the, there is uh, some thought that, you know, some of the spending that was, was people were worried would go away is not. And so a stock like United Rentals, which is uh, very involved in heavy, uh, heavy infrastructure spending, uh, you get a debt deal. I think that stock bounced back, not to mention they have an analyst meeting uh, next Wednesday. So that that's the type of stock I think is interesting. And then CRH is a uh, building material rocks, uh, which, again, um, is will benefit from a, uh, a, a, a debt deal. And then they also have a catalyst catalyst, which is, is an Irish company that is relisting in the U.S. Uh, this fall. And the differential between U.S. Uh, aggregate companies valuation and Irish is huge. And so there's upside to that as well. Real quickly on these two, because I want to move on to your more kind of semi names. But are these names that directly benefit from something related to the debt deal or just removing that overhang as a catalyst? Removing the overhang. I think a lot of cyclical stocks have been hit hard. And I, I, on the debt deal, I noticed that, and you know this too, when we, every day that it looks like we might get a debt deal, the breadth widens for the market. And that's when these stocks participate. So I think there are catalysts these stocks, but no doubt their businesses are strong, uh, assuming we get a debt deal. Okay, got it. Let's move on then to uh, some of the names that you think may be, you know, wins in the longer run and are, and are, well, you know, I hate using words like uh, expensive or cheap. I want you to do that. Yes, but, sure. but you say they're cheap. And honestly, they do trade below 20 times. And we're talking about potentially huge tailwinds here. So without further ado, uh, over to you. Well, I, you know, I, on the one hand, I hear people say, oh, I like NVIDIA at their very high multiple. Uh, and then I hear them say, well, I, you know, I'm worried about China invading Taiwan. Well, guess who makes NVIDIA's AI data yep. center chips? largely Taiwan Semiconductor. So they are, uh, they're, they're bound together. And so I think, uh, uh, you know, you can't like NVIDIA if you don't like Taiwan Semi. If you're worried about uh, its potential invasion, I don't think you can like NVIDIA at this juncture. So I think Taiwan Semi is in a very good uh, spot. Uh, it is down still significantly from where it traded two years ago. And I think that's, uh, uh, it, you know, a very good play. And then I just think that semiconductor, you know, the semiconductor equipment, applied materials is another name, again, down from where it was two years ago. Um, there will be other uh, chip companies uh, in the AI race. And I think uh, you want exposure to that. So I think this is the semiconductor area is simply a cheap way, cheaper way to play the uh, this you know explosion in AI. Sure, no, those valuations are still so reasonable. It's almost shocking sure. when people say, and, and I've seen the comments going around that this is a bear market bounce, and you know, <laughs> out, outside of this area, you know, the market is uh, acting poorly and, and kind of in some ways resembling the market peak in two thousand. What is your response to that? Do you agree? Sure. So look. Um, first of all, I would request whenever anyone says the breadth is poor. Always ask them, does that always lead to a market going down or are you only remembering 2000? Because the data suggests that actually marks narrow breadth sometimes leads to the market to go down, but a lot of times it actually broadens out and leads to the market to go up. But we all remember 2000, which was narrow breadth led to the market going down. So we kind of anchor to that to that data. So I, I just think that eventually uh, uh, all this cash is going to have to find its way back into the market. I think it's too early, but I think it's going to happen this far, this fall, and people will be searching for names that haven't participated. So I expect the breadth will widen, not uh, lead to a bear market. I remember your bullishness a couple months ago on this show, and I was like, I don't know. And uh, here we are. So uh, happy vibes. Andrew, thanks so much for coming back on today. We appreciate it.